Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman here, as always, with Tom Orr. Tom, how's it going? Tony, I cannot wait. We're about to hit the road for the first road game of the season. Ohio State's at Michigan State this weekend. We actually have a hotel in East Lansing. We're not staying 45 minutes away from campus. You know, you know, we hate to say nice things about Kevin Noon, but Kevin Noon did a tremendous job jumping the line and figuring out which which day this game was going to be and getting us a hotel in East really? Lansing before the schedule was, was announced. So there you go. Uh, make a wish. We just said something nice about Kevin Noon on this show. Um, well, thank you for tuning in, everybody. I cannot follow that one. I don't want to follow that. I don't want to be a part of the show any longer. Uh, we'll just talk to you all later, but no. Welcome into America's most tolerated game show, the Bold Predictions podcast between Tom and I. Now, last week, Tom, just so we're clear with everybody, we did tie. We actually, yeah. this may have been the highest scoring tie ever. It was three to three. Wow. Including, oh. including the the free the freebies there. Uh, I correctly predicted that Ohio State would have at least one quarter of averaging over 10 yards per carry. I believe they had three or four, in fact. So, um that should count for three points at least. And then also, uh, Mecca Buka would score a touchdown at home for the first time in 53 weeks. And he did. You, of course, got that Marshall would only have uh, no more than one play of 17 yards from scrimmage. That was correct. And the other was 240, 240, I believe. So, congratulations. And considering to you. how long I've been trying to get some variation of that to hit for me, I feel like that should count for at least three or four points. So. Maybe, maybe we tied uh, five to five or six to six. Six, six, I believe is, is where we tied. So uh, we'll have to figure out a tiebreaker. Well, we'll, we'll take care of it. Don't worry. We'll get this all situated. But without further ado, let's begin. And Tom, since I already know probably what one of yours is going to be, I would like to go first. Uh, you, by all means, go ahead. Caleb Downs is going to have an interception this week. And it's been a while. Uh, I, I don't even... He almost had an interception against Michigan. We all remember that one. His foot was just out of bounds or he didn't get established, reestablished in time. So I am thinking with the way Aiden Childs, it misses some throws and will overthrow some passes. There, there will be some wayward passes for the Ohio State defensive backs. It is time. It's been two weeks since they've forced a turnover. Two games, I, I believe now, Caleb Downs will come down with one of those wayward passes and intercept it. I, I like this one, and I think I'm already getting the vibe that you and I are expecting a very similar type of football game on Saturday because I, I, I'm going to allow your first one, and I'm just going to smoothly transition into my first one. The Ohio State defense does something they have never done this season, Tony. Mm. They force at least three turnovers on Saturday, more than the entire season to date combined. I will accept that. I have a similar one, but it's later on. We'll get to it. Hold your oh, horses. so you're going to want two points for predicting three two turnovers, I see. Okay. No, close, but no, Tom. Yeah, oh, she forces at least three turnovers. And we're not talking about turnovers on downs. These are um, fumbles. Yes, interceptions, interceptions or fumbles. fumbles, yes. Okay, all right. That's that's fair enough. I feel like we're getting along swimmingly right now. This is all going to go well. We're going to have a 15-minute show and be done with things and no kind of consternation. That's the This is when people who are obviously not listening live are looking down at their podcast devices and going... Well, he said it was going to be 15 minutes, but my app says it's about 34 to 37 minutes. So I guess the swimmingly is probably not going to last. But we'll see, Tony. We will see. Maybe we can turn over a new leaf before we have to yeah. spend an entire weekend together. You, you know, if it's a bold prediction show and you look down and it says 75 minutes, you're like, oh, God. This, this is just going to be 52 minutes of bickering. And some people like it. Some people hate it. But here you go. Here, here, here it is for you, everybody. My next one, Tom, my next one pointer is something that involves Will Howard, quarterback for Ohio State. Something that he has only done three times in his career. Can we agree that that's, uh, that's good enough to be bold? Uh, I think I would like some more context, but please continue. Will Howard accounts for four touchdowns in this game. And I know you're saying that's ridiculous, but again, he hasn't done it at Ohio State yet. Uh, in a non-conference schedule, and he's only done it three times in his entire career. This is his fifth season as a starting quarterback for a college football team. 
four touchdowns accounted for. If he was still the quarterback at Kansas State, I would say absolutely, and then move on with the show. The fact that he's now at Ohio State and playing with the skill talent that he has at Ohio State, it gives me certain pause. The fact that he hasn't gotten there the first three games, I think I probably have to grudgingly allow this one. But this feels like one that we're going to need to, if he, if this hits this week, mm. we're going to need this one to take a nap for about a month. And if it continues to not hit, then maybe we can revisit this again towards the end of October. But uh, I don't, I don't love it, but since it hasn't happened yet, I probably have to allow it. With that said, I'm not necessarily holding myself to the standard that if it hasn't happened yet, I have to allow it all the time. <laughs> no. I'm going to do it this one time. We'll see where it goes from there. Yeah. And I just want to clarify, just because you may fe feel like you gave me some leeway there or you produced some sort of, you know, uh, gave me some quarter, don't expect that I am going to do the same because I believe in my boldness. I do not, Tom, believe in yours. Well, Tony, I'm so glad that you said that you would agree that anything that hasn't happened yet this year would automatically be allowed for me. I think we all heard it just a moment ago. So, Tony, Ohio State has had 11 trips into the red zone on offense this year. Tony, do you know how many times they've scored touchdowns on those 11 trips? Nine? 11, Tony. 11. Oh. Yes. Almost had your own personal 9-11 there, but no, it is 11-11, not 9-11. So, Tony... In honor of our veterans and 11-11, I'm going to say Ohio State fails to score a touchdown on at least one red zone trip, Tony, something that has never happened in the history of Ohio State football when Will Howard is their quarterback. Well, that's impressive, Tom. Uh, I, I want to fast forward down to my fifth one-pointer, Tom, and it reads thusly. Ohio State won at least one failed red zone trip. So you're saying... They're not going to score a touchdown, but they could get a field goal. I'm saying entirely, an entirely failed red zone trip is more bold. Mm. So we need to. Is... Well, okay. So I'm going to let you have that one then. You go ahead and take that one. Okay. Because that would be pretty in direct conflict with one of mine that I'm going to get to later for my multi, mm. uh, my multi uh, point. Your parlay. Uh, ones. So <laughs> we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay. All right. How about, how about this one, Tony? The Ohio State defense scores a touchdown on Saturday. Uh, we always, this is always a yes. It's it's not just grandfathered in. It is bold as it doesn't happen. Now, it's happened on average. Uh, they're scoring, what, 0. 0.67 touchdowns per game. So if you round that up, they're scoring a touchdown per game. So it, Except somehow this would have failed two of the previous three weeks. So, well, that's math for you. That's why I don't like it. So the defense scores... Uh, a touchdown, or do you say touchdown or points? A touchdown. Uh, defense scores a touchdown. I, I, oh, here yeah, I mean, I, I'll t I'll say touchdown. I will stay stay true to my initial one. Okay. I was going to make I, fun of you, like the defense was going to kick a field goal, but of course they could have gotten a safety. Tony, it's already been a long day. Listen, I don't know why you're picking on me like this, but yes, the defense scores a touchdown on Saturday. How do you see it happening? Uh, I, I'm going to guess via turnover, Tony. Thank you for asking. You got places we'll, to be. We'll get to Tony. Tony. I've got more specifics coming later, so we'll get there in just, we'll get there uh, after the two-point uh, portion of the okay. show. How about that? All right. Since we already know three of my one-pointers, do you want to give us your next one? Sure. Uh, how about this one? According to the Ohio State game notes this week, the last time Ohio State had two different players rush for 100 yards in one game was in 2022 mm. versus Indiana. Tony, it's going to happen again this weekend. Two Ohio State Buckeyes run for at least 100 yards each. Well, here, here's the thing, Tom, because this is kind of similar to one of mine. And I have... This show, it literally might be 15 minutes. I mean, I'm just telling you right now. One of mine is uh, 220, 220. However, okay. the 220 is just Travion Henderson and Quinchon Judkins. And... Just J.J. Emeka and Carnell. See what I'm doing there? Interesting. Now, your 100-100 is fine, but you may have to raise it up a little. You know? Because I'm already doing that and... Well, if you look at last week's, for example, 
Oh, you're 220, right. 220 would have hit in terms of the running because right. Quinn John Judkins had 100 and whatever, and Tra- uh, Travion Henderson only had 60 something. So I'm you're predicting. Just, yeah. So, so what you, there's a little bit of an additional you're constraint right. on mine. So, yeah, I'm good with that. We, I, okay. So, so, so we're good. Yeah. Now, how do you, uh, Tom, when, when you say they each rush for 100 yards, you mean on the ground? That's. Yes, in the traditional definition okay. of rushing, yes. Right. Yes, they, they're going to be in a hurry and they're going to be doing it on the ground. So it's sort of a little bit of a, a wordplay there almost in a way. It is going to be interesting to see them fully operational against a Big Ten defense. I am looking forward to that to see how it looks, what else Chip Kelly throws out there. So, okay, I will uh, I will go with that one. That's good. Two Oshie Buckeyes. Now, could be any two because Will Howard is going to start running the ball here at some point. He, yes, he could start, he, he's going to start running the ball at some point. I'm not sure this is the weekend they really unleash him. That feels like that might be one to two weeks away before we really see him as a big weapon in the run game. But yeah, I think you're going to see him more run more this week than in previous weeks. Okay. Now let's get back to my, my fourth one pointer that I mentioned, which uh, is the first time we've ever seen anything like this. 220, 220 with the dictates of who is going to be doing that 220 and 220. Because right now with this offense, I don't know that 220, 220 is givable anymore. You know, it's, it's like, no. That's, that's no longer bold because they're basically averaging that. So you've got to put some uh, some guard guardrails in there. So how do you feel about this version of 220, 220? I like it. I like the, the creativity. I don't, it's... There are some more guardrails there. I don't, I mean, those are the guys who you would assume would, Mm -hmm. if they're going to get there, be the ones who get them there. So, you know, I don't want to take one of them away from you. And I do like the overall creativity. But as you said, 220, 220 is not that bold. How about we make it 234, 234? Is 234, 234 the new 220, 220? Well, no. I'll, I'll just, no, here, here's why, because 234, 234 as a standalone, I feel like 240, 240 is what we did last week. And now at that that's been established and met like now it has to be 250, 250 as a standalone, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you got to just keep upping How the about this? But no, How no, about no, this? But about this? One of them can two, be 217. One of them can be 234. How about that? Oh, and you can pick which one is which. I think that is fantastic. Um, I choose not to pick. I will just. Um, I'll tell you after the game. I got it right. Yeah, no, I like that. 217, 2, 234. Let's go with um, the, the rushing is 217. And the passing is 234. That's, you know, that, I can't fault this um, a, a, until I get it, the exact opposite. Then I will definitely fault this. Can I tell you the funniest way for this to not happen for you? No. It's not that you get the numbers backwards. It's that they've rushed for 218 yards between Travion Henderson and Quinchon Judkins. But then you have a team rush for negative two yards at the end of the game when they're taking a knee. And they both finish above it, but the team finishes below it. That's the funniest way for this to not happen for you. Well, well no, see, I'm sticking with the players here. So you're just, you're just taking the, oh, it's not the team. It's just the right. players. What's the players? Okay. Well then I, I would like to amend my earlier answer to say that you picking the previous, uh, the picking the wrong 217 and 234, then that is in fact the funniest way. Okay. Glad we got that clarified. Which so want to clarify the most painful outcome and hilarious. I, I just want, to, I just want the people at home to have something to root for on Saturday night. That's all. But they do have something to root for Tom and the feedback that we get on the show from the people who provide positive feedback has been overwhelmingly positive and I love it. From the self-selected group of people who say positive things. Yes. Universally positive. I'm as confused as you are. All right. So here we have, uh, let's see, we're going to have, I'm going to be in a little, have a little bit of a conundrum because I had a couple extras, but I've sort of sh- I've crossed one out and, uh, given one away. So how about this one? This is a little bit of a modification of the earlier one. But this is something that has not happened since the last time Ohio State played up in East Lansing. That is, two Ohio State receivers have 100 yards each and one Ohio State running back, one Ohio State rusher has 
100 yards. So two receivers with 100 yards and one rusher with 100 yards. Yeah, I don't know that they've have they they haven't done that this year either, have they? Because they've only the, the, according to the game notes this week, they have not done it since the Michigan State okay. game in twenty twenty two. So, Tom, you're trying the you're basically have done it one game in a row. If we're just looking at this Michigan State road thing, and you're trying to tell me that that would be bold if they do yes. exactly what they did it, last time. Let me tell you, everything is exactly the same at Michigan State as it was the last time we were up there. So yes, exactly the same. Yeah, I, I like this one. We will go ahead and allow it. Uh, boy, you're putting a lot of stake in this, this OSU rushing attack, and I just don't know why. Uh, based on what I've seen, it's pretty sketchy. Mm -hmm. A lot of those eggs in the chip basket. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. Let's see. So that that's four for me. How many do you have now? I, I've got four, and I can give you, you my four. Fifth. Okay. So I feel like I'm contractually obligated to give you a Jeremiah Smith one. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about his first career 150 yard receiving game? I, it, we've got the James the the James Webb telescope up up in space, and it can see back through time basically. At no time and no no point in time have we ever seen Jeremiah Smith with the 150 yard receiving game, and mm -hmm. this can go all the way back in time, like to the Big Bang. Thousands of years, Tom. Uh, so yeah, 150 yards receiving for Jeremiah Smith. I mean, it's an event, uh, inevitability. It's an eventuality. And then once he gets there, you probably will need to bump it up. But until he does, uh, 150 yards receiving for somebody who only had what 70 last week. So you're, you're, you know, Tom. I would have gone with double, but uh, no, no, no. 150 yards receiving for Jeremiah Smith. I also have a Jeremiah Smith. We'll get to that one. That's my two pointer. But mm -hmm. uh, I do have one one pointer left. I like this one. This is Tom. I I'm going to be honest. I applaud you this week for your boldness because this is not like you. This is very much not like you. I I know you've caught the audience off guard. You've caught me off guard. This is what happens when I don't have as much time to prepare for the show, Tony. Well, that's uh, that's unfortunate for you and fortunate for the audience. And what, you know, not saying anything beyond that, uh, the audience appreciates your lack of effort and uh, they don't see it as an insult to them, Tom, because they've become used to it in most other avenues. My final one pointer is something that has not happened this year for anybody named Will Howard. Will Howard with a, a rush of at least 20 yards this week, I do believe you're going to start to see some more running, but I don't know that it's going to be, it's not going to be, you know, 16 carries or anything like that, but maybe three or four, something like that. And one of those will go for 20, something he has not yet done this season. I will tell you, he has done it in the past. What is his long run this season? Didn't he have a 16 19. or 17 yarder? 19. Well, Tony, uh, I would love to return the compliment and on um, your compliment to me on my boldness and uh, all that. But boy, a whole extra yard, an American yard, one extra yard, Tony, in this economy. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. I'm. That's three feet. What's what? I don't even know how to describe the amount of whelmed that I am. It's like over overwhelmed at, at mm -hmm. your boldness here. Um, You're welcome. How can we decide on an actual number that won't be insulting to the audience? Um, 34 is obviously outrageous. It's too much. It, yes, too it's much. too much. It's too much. That would be that would be asking too much for a one pointer. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. 17, obviously insufficient. Right. So what do we do here, Tom? What, what is what is the closest number between 17 and 20 that we could use? I love when Tony has Tony gets on these shows and is like, I wonder if he still has object permanence. Darn, he's still darn once again. It's all still week, there. We'll see. How about 24? Five yards longer than his previous. Okay. That feels like it's not asking a ton, but it's it's a little bit of an, an uptick there. Well, here's the thing, and we'll agree to it because we do have to eventually move on. 
But what we have done is essentially set in motion. And I just talked about the Big Bang and, and all of these things. We have set in motion the the very fact that Will Howard is now going to have a 23-yard run in this game. And it's a lot of power to wield. And I, I don't think either one of us should have this power. With great power comes great responsibility. We are not responsible enough for this kind of power. Um, it's eventually going to be used for evil rather than good. And I don't know where this show falls in that line. It's probably mm, frenemy. I don't know what it is. But uh, 24 yard run, unfortunately, um, I will tell you, Tom, he, uh, Will Howard had five rushes of 20 yards or more last season. So I don't feel like this is totally unfair, but I do feel like we have just cemented a 23 yard run today. Well, if we can magically speak a one yard shorter into existence, Tony, can you think about how happy a 98 yard Will Howard run would make the Ohio State fan base? <laughs> So by making this, Will Howard will have a run of at least 99 yards. You, you could go. speak that into existence right now. Do you, Tony, do you care about the audience enough to be willing to sacrifice this one point well, for their happiness? Let's, and let's, I will remind you, the universe might, remote, re, might reward you with that one precious point for this selfless act. I can promise you the universe has never rewarded me for any of my selfless acts. I am the most selfless, selfless person I know, the most humble person I know, and it has gotten me nowhere. But just wait, maybe my third, my three-pointer will be right in line with that 99-yard rush for Will Howard. So there we go. All five of our one-pointers, fantastically bold to some extent. Do you want to go ahead? I, I know I started first, but we're kind of going back and forth. So give me your two-pointer. Okay, Tony. We all watched last weekend's Ohio State game, right? We, we were all there and we're watching on TV. Tony, let me tell you about the day that the Ohio State special teams are going to have. Oof, oof. No, no thank you. Zero penalties, zero punts for touchbacks, zero missed placement kicks, PATs, or field goals, plus, Tony, a return of at least 17 yards on the day for the Ohio State Buckeyes on special teams. Tony, if you, if all, if you have a memory that only goes back eight days or so, nine days or so, this is about a 15-pointer. So I will just, I want to make sure we have that context there. But I am, I am predicting Ohio State special teams has a good day. So we've got the no punts being a touchback, a punt return of at least 17 yards, no missed placements, and what else? No penalties. So that means no they can't penalties. kick even a single kickoff out of bounds or be offsides or commit any penalties on special teams. Yeah, this is... This is the kind of thing where, he, he, like a parent who has, you know, let's say five children and, and their worst kid, their dumbest kid is just the worst and very dumb. And they're like, you know, if, if you can just walk around the block and it's a small block and not hurt yourself or hurt anybody else, you know, we're going to take you to Disney World. That's what you're, you're, you're doing here, Tom. You're trying to take the special teams to Disney World for just walking around the block and not falling on their face and, you know, chipping a tooth or something. But I, I'm having a hard time saying, you know, no, 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 because I've seen how, I've seen how this child uh, walks around the block, if you will. So I don't like this at all because the only, the only bold thing here is a punt return of 17 yards. But once we start compounding these into parlays. We all know, nobody knows more than me, the parlays are difficult. <sighs> um, so uh, this should happen, Tom, and I I don't like giving up free two-pointers, but maybe some uh, reciprocal uh, predicting going on and some uh, allowances for my two-pointer, we'll see. No, don't, don't worry, I've got plenty of boldness. I'm gonna allow this because um, I want to throw something else on there, but you know, five leg parlay is, is very, very difficult, and these all these all should happen. How about this? No kickoff returns allowed of more than twenty four yards. I don't think they've allowed one this season, so I think that is a reasonable addition to this that does not substantially change the likelihood right. of it happening. Okay. All right. Then uh, then we are in agreement and we can move on to something bold. 
Your Honor, Your Honor. That's right. Here you go. Um, Jeremiah Smith, as we are contractually obligated, will score uh, at least two touchdowns this week. Uh, one of those will be from inside the 17, and one will be from outside the 34. Tom, what say you? Well, you said two touchdowns, and I was about to say, Tony, I don't feel this is very bold. And I was going to say it very respectfully. Just yeah, rest assured, it was going to be very respectful. I was not going to compare you to a child trying to get taken to Disneyland. That's for sure. Uh, I think that's good because I like the... It narrows some of the... Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I think odds are if you were going to say one is less than 17, one's more than 17, yeah, sure. I think that's, and, and one's less than 34, one's more than 34. I think I, either that, I think I would, I would have said like, mm, but, but I think the compromise I would have come up with is this, where you're going to, you can see him just, hey, they've got the ball on the 11 and they're going to throw him a fade mm -hmm. and that's a touchdown. And then we've seen plenty of them throwing balls to him from far away from the end zone and then the ball ending up in the end zone on that play. So I, I think this is something that I think has a, a decent chance of happening, but also within the parameters, there's lots of ways he could have a great game and not have this happen. So yeah, I, I, I am going to have to allow this one and grudgingly tip my cap to you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I I don't know what to do with all this kindness coming from you, frankly, but uh, let's just move on and stop talking about it. All right, Tony, three-pointer. I uh, talked earlier about Ohio State defense scoring a touchdown, and you asked how you thought it was going to happen. Tony, allow me to tell you, it is going to be a Jordan Hancock pick six, Tony. Yeah, I... I is it has it been established that when you predict a certain pick six that that is automatically three points? I know I I, I don't think we've ever argued against it because it's one of yeah. those things where if you say yeah they're going to have a pick six yeah mm -hmm. that's a point or you know depending on parameters or they're going to score defense touchdown that's one thing but a certain player to have an interception that's inarguably a point a certain player to have an interception and also return it for a touchdown mm -hmm. that I, I don't think we've ever. No. said that couldn't be three points. No, and I, I seem to recall like one year I predicted a, like Cam Martinez did something. I don't know if I predict, predicted him to have a pick six or something and something was called back and I ended up getting upset and missing out on those points. So I will uh, allow this and I'm sorry, that was just uh, not related to anything, but uh, Jordan Hancock, pick six. Yep, we're going to go ahead and allow that to him. Uh, and the, the turnovers has been kind of a theme here. And that is also what my three-pointer is going to involve. Tom, I am uh, my three-pointer is something that has only happened twice in the last uh, seven-plus years. So can we agree that this is worth three points? We can potentially agree on that. I'd love to hear the end of this paragraph. Go on. Well, um, uh, Ohio State will be plus four in turnovers in this game, which is not with which has only happened twice since uh, 2017. Which is that um, right? I because I almost picked them to be plus four in turnovers, or at least to have four turnovers. Mm -hmm. Like I, I thought about doing four turnovers as a two pointer, and decided I'll do three turnovers as a mm -hmm. one pointer instead. Plus four. Hey, you know, Ohio State's going to turn it over in the first drive, and I'm going to be like. Chasing, yeah, chasing turnovers he, at this point. The problem is, mm -hmm. was one was one of the times against Iowa last year that they it were plus was, four? Um, plus four in, uh, it would have been 2022, they were plus four against Iowa and at Penn State. That was the JT2 and Willow Isle game. Back to back. Okay. Not since okay. and, and really not before. Okay. I feel like based on the historical parameters we've laid out here, this kind of has to be a three-pointer. I would agree. Well, what was your two-pointer? Oh, Jeremiah Smith. <laughs> you know, I don't like that as a three-pointer either. See? Hmm. Okay, what about this? Three is two times 1.5. So what if I give you 1.5 for the Jeremiah Smith one and two for this one? What do you think? Tom, you just said that this was established as as a 
qualifying three pointer. It has how many games yes, they I'm, played? Yes, but I'm but we're still negotiating. So are you? I'm trying to talk you down to two. That's all. I I, I don't think this is negotiation. I think this is you like begging, and it's just I, I'm not going to say it's beneath you. Uh, it is disgusting. Uh, this, you're putting we've the audience off. For, for, oh, over the years in this show, we've established that nothing is beneath either of us. That's no. fine. Hey, look, Tony, I'm looking and you're not going to believe it, but our 15 minute show has once again turned into a 30 minute show. Tony, I, I'm sure at the nine minute mark of this show, if I had said, Tony, this show's going to go 30 minutes, you would have been like, that's bold. That's worth three points. And frankly, I'm really regretting not having done that. Yeah, you should have. You should have had the same kind of forethought that I did. So Tom, what is your free bold prediction? Well, Tony, this is free. This is a somewhat bold one, though, because this is not, this is something that we have seen happen in the last year. So I'm putting myself a little bit at risk here. However, during Saturday's game, before, during, and after. Oh, no. Saturday's game at Spartan Stadium, Michigan State will not show any former Austrian painters and German military leaders has to be the same guy on the scoreboard, Tony. Adolf Hitler, not even once. I, I, I knew right away where you're going, Tom, and I, we're, we're going to allow this. And again, now, if, if, if it doesn't happen, then uh, that is two, that takes two points away from you. Is that what we've established? Or is it, is it a minus? If they, if they do show two. him, then it would take two points away from me or three points okay. away from me, whatever it was. But, Yes, I, I'm, I'm confident. I, I have faith in the Spartans. Adolf Hitler will not appear on the scoreboard at Michigan uh, or at Michigan State on Saturday. To get taking a little bit of a risk, but... Okay. All right. Well, we will accept that. I uh, the, the free bullet prediction that I am handing off to you is something that has happened in uh, every game this season, and that is uh, Aiden Childs throws at least two... In completions. Okay. I, I will accept that. Of course, if it doesn't happen, you, you do lose points. There's putting it on an individual player, obviously. Mm. My, my concern, Ooh. Tony, uh, for mm. your part, part there is not that he uh, plays the whole game and plays it in a Martellian manner. My concern mm -hmm. for you would be, boy, what if he gets hurt early? I just, I did not think and about that. Tony. When we say incompletions, do we mean passes hitting the turf or do we mean passes not completed to his team? No, this can be Davis Warren incompletion. This can this can definitely okay. go to the other team. Yes, uh, for sure. Okay, he can, the, the old Davis can, Warren hat trick. Yes. He can throw a complete Davis Martell Warren. With the David, Davis Warren hat trick uh, parlay. What, what more could you ask for from your quarterback situation? So there you go. Bold prediction show. Down and done. I'm uh, very, very satisfied with it. I think we will do well in this one. There's some real possibilities in this one. So I feel confident. I feel bold and I feel emboldened. So uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Hit that thumbs up before you go. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead. And if you are listening via your podcast platform of choice, we would appreciate a five-star rating interview. That always helps us. And of course, continue to find us at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Sign up, become a premium member and say hello to us there on the message board. It is the best way to support what we do. We do appreciate those of you who have done so. So Thank you all for tuning in. We've got big plans for the Michigan State trip. We'll be on the road. Friday, we'll be going live. And of course, Saturday, we'll have you uh, covered with the with the, the post-game, uh, the, the uh, post-game tailgate presented by Tailgate USA, as well, live from Spartan Stadium. So look forward to that. Hit the bell to be notified when we go live because we're going to be doing it quite a bit. So thank you all for tuning in, and we'll talk to you guys later.